Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of my live tea tasting. I've got an exciting blend for you guys today and it's something that I haven't done in a really long time. However, I have to confess, I did taste this one before, but since we're doing the theme of uh, iced versus hot, uh, this is going to actually come out to be a little bit interesting because I have iced a tea this week that uh, I am not completely, I'm not completely convinced about. Nicole, welcome. Um, you're going to actually, you're going to enjoy watching this stream because it's one of your near and dear favorites. I have decided to, uh, Sneha, welcome. I have decided to uh, drink both hot and iced Lapsang Souchong. And this is a little bit crazy because Lapsang is not the kind of iced tea that you would generally think of as traditional. Um, and I have never had it iced before, but I did hear it from a really good source, Juliet, uh, who likes drinking iced Lapsang. And I, I don't know what to, uh, I don't know what to say about that. So uh, let's start with my near and dear favorite the hot version of Lapsang Souchong. Now, Lapsang Souchong is extremely smoky, and it's extremely, um, it's, ex it's a very dark tasting tea, uh, but it's also one of my all time favorites. Uh, it's the kind of tea that it's a, uh, it's usually a little bit of a, um, oh, sorry, the <laughs> my phone is a little bit, there we go. <laughs> I had to prop it up a little bit better because I have a brand new setup, you guys, for, um, since I'm doing Twitch, I could no longer use my, uh, my laptop webcam because it was just not cutting it. So I have a new one, uh, and it's, str I'm simultaneously, uh, mm -hmm. simul simultaneously streaming on, uh, Facebook and Twitch. So, uh, you guys feel free to pop in on Twitch as well. And uh, take a look at, uh, take a watch there. But yeah, let me let me just rewind a little bit because the very, uh, the very reason for this is um, we're doing Lapsang Souchong today, and it's one of my all-time favorite teas. Uh, it's a bit of an acquired taste, um, but this comes from the Fujian uh, province of China, and the way that it's processed, it's processed into dark, uh, into black tea, and then it's uh, smoked. Usually they use pine wood or, uh, what is it? Uh, not pine wood, it's, uh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, it is pine wood. Usually they use pine wood to, um, to smoke it, let all the leaves absorb that smokiness, and it just comes out so good. So, for my first, uh, for my first sip, I'm gonna go with hot, because it's a very, very savory tea. I can't wait any longer, let's do this. Mm. Oh God, yes. Now this is a super duper strong tea. I have always been a fan of it, and it tastes exactly like I would have expected. Um, it's very smoky, uh, very, very savory. It tastes like a pine wood campfire. It's everything that you love about barbecue, um, and it's like. So savory it's it's smoky um there are uh, zach welcome haven't seen you in a while um there like it, it's it's very much a diverse crowd that appreciates it um because it's nowhere near traditional as you would define a tea tea you know you usually have that whole mindset of english breakfast like a ceylon um, or a Darjeeling or something like that uh, along those lines. This is a lot stronger. It's a lot smokier and It's got a very bold flavor and it's it's one of my favorites. It is the kind of tea that will wake you up in the morning And it's also got a pretty good uh, caffeine uh, a good caffeine content the way that um, It feels mm -hmm. going down it's nice and smooth. It's, uh, gamer, welcome. See, the, I, I just, like, <laughs> it's very hard for me to keep up with both chats uh, going at the same time because uh, it, it's, I, I'm still getting used to this setup. But, <laughs> uh, so not to, not to, uh, 
I'm not to get too distracted. Okay, so as you can see, the T is. Uh, I did, I'm trying not to spill it, but you can see it's just a very general, really, really black, dark, almost foreboding uh, colors in it. And it's. It, it, it looks exactly, I mean, it tastes exactly how it looks. It's very, very dark, very savory. Uh, it's the kind of, uh, it's the kind of flavor that you would associate with meat. Um, but yeah, this is like, it's super, it's super delicious, super smooth. A really good Lapsang Souchong will, you'll retaste it when you breathe. And it's nice and, and, and just over, it's, it, it covers all. So you can see, there is, oh, I was trying to avoid that spill, but as you can see, there is, the way that it looks, there's not much of a difference in size and growth, uh, because it's a black tea and it's already highly oxidized, so you're not going to get much in, uh, in, in growth, um, but that what meanwhile that usually uh, indicates the kind of flavor that you're gonna get uh, that is not indicative because the flavor is so deep in the in the leaf that when it comes out it comes out oh that is so good okay so I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the uh, oh you know what let me first show you guys what it looks like um, it's a pretty dark, it's a kind of reddish orange, a nice bronze tinge to it. Uh, usually you get a nice, uh, a, a nice flavor from black teas when it's, uh, when it's doing its thing. Um, Snail, you want to know what is the process of making Lapsang? Well, um, the making it as far as uh, processing the tea itself. Uh, it's oxidized pretty well. It's usually in the uh, 80 and 90 percent um, oxidation, and part of that process is to take these leaves and put them in a uh, in a smokehouse. Now they used to the the, the story goes. I'm not sure how much uh, how much of this is true, but the story goes that back in the day uh, when you when you wanted to move. Uh, move tea from one part of the country to the other, part of the process was trying to preserve it and, and keep it uh, oxidizing on the go. So what they used to do was using heat to oxidize it while they traveled and they would have a portable uh, smokehouse. But what they found out is that the leaves during the oxidation process was absorbing the smoke itself. So you would have these traveling uh, smoke houses, uh, just going from here to there, and generating the heat, um, and you would get when you pull out the the leaf, you get this really dark, savory flavor. So um, it it stuck. They uh, people enjoyed it. Rachel, welcome. Teresa, welcome. People really enjoyed it, so it became a new a new thing. So you know, like this is. Part of the discovery process and it's incredible like i am so glad i found lapsang suchong so now i'm going to do the thing that i have been a little bit nervous about <laughs> because not only is this iced tea and it's not the kind of uh tea that i would normally ice it's also unsweetened uh unsweetened iced tea is it's it's, it's a deal breaker to some people uh, to me, I'm experiment to I'm experimentative, so I will I'll give it a shot. So right off the bat, you can see it's a lot uh, it's a lot lighter and a lot more it looks a lot more refreshing. So let's see. Okay, so it's a bit of a muted scent, and I have to I have to let you guys know um, this apartment has smelled like smoke for the past couple days uh, only because like I, I made some of the lapsang earlier this week and then put it in the fridge um, and then making more of it just added to it I love this smell it's like really it, it smells like 
Uh, was it? Yeah, I made the apartment smell like smoke. Like smoke. <laughs> okay, so here we go down the hatch. Mmm. It's actually not bad. When it's iced, it's got a much lighter flavor. It's a little bit more airy. It's more like it, uh, it stays on the tongue a little bit, uh, with, with a little bit more, um, sweetness. It's, I never, it's kind of, it's got kind of a smoky, nutty kind of flavor when it's iced. Pops, welcome. It's really, it's really kind of refreshing. I did not expect this kind of, this kind of flavor. Because usually when, when you drink it, it's a very hearty flavor. It's a very strong, um, very, very savory kind of flavor. It's, it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not wholesome. It's, uh, well, I mean, it is wholesome, but, uh, robust. It's a very robust flavor. Um, and it takes over the whole mouth. Uh, with a good, with good intention. Uh, now I do say, mention that with the caveat that there's only about a 50% chance that you would like it, uh, only because it's it's a bit of it's a bit of an acquired taste, as I mentioned before. Um, I've tried, I've given it to a lot of people to to try, and this is purely my observation. Um, but there has been an overwhelmingly uh, more positive response from men than from women. Uh, the women that have liked it, they loved it. Uh, they they drink the tea with like a passion. And <laughs> um, Shade, if you ever get to watch this, <laughs> I'm talking about you. Uh, how much you enjoyed it. Uh, but like the people who love it, they love it. So this is definitely a surprise. I was not expecting to like iced lapsang this much. You get on uh, on the iced tea. It's not as smoky. You get more of the wood. Um. It's not as effervescent when you breathe out. It doesn't encapsulate uh, the palate the way the hot version does. Um, but it really, it, it, it's still impactful. You are getting a full flavor. You're getting a nice, uh, savory ref kind of refreshment, um, which is not something I usually find together in one in one taste um, when something is is refreshing when something is strong it hits the palate like that just pow and you get that flavor and you're awake this one when it's iced it's nice and smooth uh, it keeps things keeps things uh, really 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 good <laughs> Now the one thing I like about Lapsang is that it's a little bit hard to screw up um, because the the smokiness covers uh, a multitude of sins. Now the way that I did this, I steeped it for five minutes at 212 degrees. Normally they say do it for about um, do it for about three, but you know I mean like for people who don't like strong flavors. I would recommend that, you know, giving it less time, um, even a lighter temperature, that would help, um, that would help lessen the blow. When I tried Lapsang for the first time, uh, I bought this from the brick and mortar store, and the guy who uh, was running it at the time, well not really running it, but uh, you know, he was, he was on duty, he was like, okay, I recommend this, but... <laughs> You need to try this for about three minutes at a lower temperature. See if you like it. Great. 
I was like, sure, thanks for the advice. I went right home and did it 212 for five minutes and loved every minute of it. <laughs> it was just so good. Uh, instantly, because I had never had an experience like that before, uh, before that point. I was still kind of new to tea, uh, and I think this was like within six to eight months of when I started drinking regularly. So having this kind of blasted experience, it was just amazing. Like, oh, I, like to this day, I'm still, I, I, I still get excited because I love this tea so much. And however, um, for people who are unsure, it can be a very, uh, it can be a very, a, a very strange experience. Um, to, to smell it dry versus smelling it wet and already steeped, it's like night and day. Because during the, uh, the steeping process, it releases all the flavors. You're getting a watered, literally a watered down version of the, um, you're getting a literally a watered down version of the uh, of the flavor, but um, when you're smelling it, it's a very very strong flavor. It's a very I mean sorry, it's a very very strong scent, um, and it hits you right in the face. It's kind of got I, I used to joke about this because it's like the the smell of it is accurate, um, but I used to say that it smells like a shoe store. You know you have you walk into Payless. And you get like a leathery, um, a leathery, strong, smoky kind of ambiance to it, and that's what it smells like uh, when it's when it's dry, right out of the pouch. It smells like a shoe that hasn't been worn yet, um, and that's kind of appetizing. Um, but not, not if you take it at face value, you know? Uh, you have to be a little bit brave to, to give it a shot. But I highly recommend that you do uh, if you like savory flavors. Mm. Oh, it is so good. <laughs> oh, man, it's been, it's been a very long time since I've had Lapsang. And, um, like, every time I do, I'm just in another world. Uh, it is so savory. It's so, uh, so welcoming, so warming. Um, I never really drink it in the summer, only because it's, it's, it kind of, like, warms you too much on the inside. Um, and on a hot day, it's going to make you all a whole lot more uncomfortable. But... Uh, this is a special occasion because I'm drinking it both hot and iced, uh, and I'm very surprised by it. Uh, another thing that I like to do to show how versatile these flavors are, um, what I enjoy doing with Lapsang is grinding it into powder. And then I mix it in with other seasons and uh, herbs and uh, stuff like that, and then I use it to season my meat. Uh, when I make the like when I roast a I'm not roast when I grill a steak oh my god it's incredible because it adds a layer of smokiness to the already barbecued flavor and it just gives it a nice uh accented kick now I have to say drinking these side by side I, like, they are, it's kind of like siblings. Like, they're not exactly the same, but you can tell they're related, <laughs> that kind of a thing. Um, because the, uh, was this, I was thinking Lapsang and Barbecue. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I've done that before, and I'm gonna do it again. I have some steaks in the freezer that is, that I'm itching to, to do this to, um, but that's for something later on this week. Uh, but I have, like, I'm thoroughly enjoying uh, the flavor of the smokiness. 
I mean, this is great for like the 4th of July. Um, if you don't mind the extra heat, I would actually, oh, you know what? <laughs> That's another side anecdote. Um, I had done, I had created a mixture of Lapsang Souchong with chili lime green coconut. And it combines the smokiness with a really, really hot uh, spice kick to it. And I actually, the na I've, I've named this because it's completely accurate. I call it liquid kick in the face. Um, I, I had made it at the brick and mortar store at Adagio. Uh, it was just a 50-50 split. And I did this in, in the middle of winter. And let me tell you, that flavor went a long way. I drank it almost every day. And it keeps you warm. Uh, if you had any... Uh, any uh, 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 congestion clears you right up. Uh, and I actually, one of my co-workers at the time, he was like, Mike, I, I'm thoroughly stuffed up. I need something to, uh, I, I need something to, to clear my sinuses. I said, don't worry, fam. I got you. <laughs> I, yeah, it, act, it ad absolutely clears the sinuses. Um, I gave it to him. And literally, ten minutes later, he was like, oh my god. <laughs> he was like, man, you were not kidding. This stuff really, it, it, it really worked. Within ten minutes, he was breathing. He was like, ha ah, ha, relief. <laughs> I think I must have shared like two or three cups uh, with him after that because it, like, it, it worked. Get that chili powder in there. Boy. Mm. Okay, questions, comments, I'm going to open up the floor. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. I'm going to answer everything that I can uh, while I give announcements, because I do have quite a few announcements today that it's been an incredible, an incredible week. And, you know, like, oof, I, I, so much has happened. Okay, so, uh, let's get the obvious one right out of the way uh tomorrow is our next uh tea party the virtual reality party so i'm going to be uh hosting that from i believe it's three o'clock on you guys know these tea parties happen uh they go on for a few mm -hmm. hours so mm -hmm. great <laughs> i've i put the um the link on the board uh, they're in the announcements section, so go ahead and take a look if you're interested. Definitely come on in. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Uh, and and we'll have a lot of fun. That's that's some really good stuff. Okay, uh, now for the stuff that I haven't really spoken about. So last weekend, I mentioned that I was accepted to the International Tea Festival, uh, where I will be ha hosting a... Uh, a, a virtual booth for eight hours a day, both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, that's November, I believe, November 7th and 8th. Um, I have it somewhere on my calendar, so uh, that, that one's way off. But I was actually um, accepted into a second uh, tea festival called the Nomad tea, uh, International Tea Festival. And that's going to be all online. I'll be hosting a party, uh, another tea party for about an hour and a half. It's called Getting to Know Your Besties. Um, and we're going to have people from all over the world join us. I think there's a limit of 12 or 20. I forgot what I put down. Um, I, if it's 12, I can raise it to 20. <laughs> because, you know, the more the merrier. But... Um, we're going to discuss the uh, our our own personal tea journeys, and you know we're going to learn from each other. This is going to be an an excellent uh, an excellent opportunity. Now I did uh, leave the, uh, the, the 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 website on the community. I'll definitely post it again uh, up until the date. The date is going to be uh, July twenty fifth. 
So that's two weekends from now, I believe. Um, and it's going to go on from, uh, I believe, 4 to 6.30. If, I, if, if my memory serves me correct, but old man brain, you know how that is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be hosting that for about an hour and a half, and I'm really excited to, to get this going. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see where it goes from there. Also, um, I, I posted it a little bit earlier, uh, but I have the new prototypes for my merch coming in. Uh, I still have other stuff coming in that I, uh, purchased specifically for the, uh, the convention. But we got the first one today. So, let's show you guys live here, we have the official... Community mug with the community and the uh, Facebook website there. So this is my first step towards merchandise, and I am thoroughly thrilled about this. Like you have no idea how much this this means to me. This is like this is what is showing me that my vision is solid. It's real. It's coming. So, this is just inspiring to me, and I am great. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Thanks. This is, I mean, like, it's, it's, I'm overwhelmed with joy that the, uh, oh, I forgot to show you guys that, uh, <laughs> on Twitch, we see, that's the community. I know nobody's watching, uh, on Twitch very much except for, uh, Gamer Girl, but uh, this will be on the uh, on my page afterwards. So yeah. Oh, anyway, okay. <laughs> that that is that. Um, try to remember if there are any other. Uh, thank you, thank you, Rachel. I I'm thrilled about it too. Um, I don't know of any other announcements. Uh, that I have off the top of my head. Uh, can folks from the community join either of the tea festivals? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, tickets have not gone on sale yet for the International Tea Festival. Um, but you can register, uh, on the Nomad Tea Festival right now at, uh, they're still, they're still working on it. Uh, but... As far as I know, registration is free, and my event is definitely free. I don't, I'm not doing it for money. Um, but you know, this is something that's good for for everybody just to get to know each other. Uh, so you can go to uh, what was it, nomadtfestival.com, and register there. Uh, the again, the the website is on the the Facebook page, and I'll. Send it again later on uh, as, we, as we draw closer. Um, I will also be posting it. I already posted it on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitch. So anybody that's interested in joining, you're more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure about general admission. I know the general admission for the International Tea Festival is free. Uh, and you only pay if you want a swag bag or... Um, it's a swag bag or the lessons. Uh, you can well, it's swag bag and or the lessons because if you pay for the lessons, you get the swag bag too. Um, but yeah, everything is pre-recorded. You'll get access to that, um, and yeah, that's gonna be an incredible experience. Uh, so I am running a little bit low on both. So questions, comments, anything you want to talk about? Now is the time, or forever hold your peace because I think I can. Chug this this one down in no problem. Oh, Teresa, your question: What would I, uh, what would I pair this with? Well, that's an easy one because I already talked about it before. Um, meat, <laughs> steak, chicken, pork, anything that's like super savory. This is this complements it very well. I tried a little a little when I first uh, a little uh, correction <laughs> when I first did this years ago. Uh, I said, maybe barbecue chips. Yeah, I was wrong. No, barbecue chips, uh-uh. Do not use barbecue chips with this. It does not work well. 
I learned that the hard way. Mm. But definitely, definitely steak, chicken, pork. That that goes very, very well. Whew. Okay, questions, comments, anything you want to bring up? Now's the time of forever hold your peace because I didn't get to uh, do it the last time. Besides meat, what dessert? That is going to be challenging because this thing is so overpowering and so savory. I, I, I usually associate... Um, Stuff that's that's sweet with dessert, um, and now that I know it's not going to go well with barbecue chips, I am kind of like steering away from the salty. Um, if anything, if <clears throat> excuse me, if anything, I would say uh, sea salt chips. I don't want to make it super duper flavorful, and. It would just mess up the uh, the flavor for both, um, so I'm playing it a little bit safe. I would say sea salt chips. That's my official my official ruling. All right, All right down the hatch. Mm mm. Oof. Oh, thank you guys for joining me once again. This has been an incredible uh, incredible journey today, um, and. I guess next, uh, I hope to see you guys tomorrow, but if not, have a great weekend, a wonderful week, and I will see you later. Mm -hmm. Bye!